What should I build with AI? If this is the question that you are struggling with, watch this video till the end. Paul Graham, who is one of the founders of Y Combinator, the startup school, he says that the work that you do should have three qualities. First, it should be something that you have a natural aptitude for. Second, it must be something that you have deep interest in so that you can you know, overcome challenges that will come your way while you are working on that project. And third thing is, that particular project, that thing should offer scope to do great work. Now, I have been working in tech. I like solving problems in the world of engineering and AI. I have deep interest in AI. But now it comes down to the third question, the third quality. Okay, what should I work on that will offer you know, great success. And AI, as you all know, is filled with noise at this point, partly because of, uh, you know, there's so much hype and everybody wants to ride the wave. So the whole field is filled with too many bad ideas at this point. It comes down to how to find good ideas. And in order to answer this question, I thought, why not follow someone who has a track record of identifying and nurturing successful ideas in the tech industry. Why Combinator? Why Combinator's selection process has consistently surfaced companies that go on to reshape industries, entire sectors, and that makes their portfolio a valuable indicator of emerging trends and technologies. So all I had to do was to look at the kind of AI companies and founders YC is backing. Specifically, I wanted to learn what are the hottest industries and sectors for AI startups, which industries have untapped potential and, you know, industries that are ripe for AI disruption, uh, what all companies and what all startups are solving uh, problems in emerging technologies like blockchain or uh, quantum computing. And uh, there must be many companies working on AI safety because we have so many regulations coming in. So companies working on data privacy, AI safety, accessibility, explainability, observability, those are the kind of uh, insights that we want. And lastly, you also want to understand the typical background and skills these founders have. So common traits of YC-backed founders in order to understand how practically feasible it is for you to pursue similar kind of projects. Now, for those who do not know, Y Combinator is a leading startup accelerator that uh, provides seed funding, mentorship, and resources uh, to help early stage startups succeed. Basically, they invest 500,000 US dollars in each startup that is accepted into their three month program uh, in exchange for a small equity stake. And uh, this program aims to help uh, these startups uh, dramatically improve their product, help them with user growth, and also uh, increases their options to raise additional funding. Now, coming to the data collection process. So I collected the data from YC's startup directory. You have more than 5,000 companies uh, over here that they have backed so far. I was only interested in AI companies that too from last uh, four cohorts, summer 24, winter 24, summer 23, winter 23. And uh, the tags that I've selected, artificial intelligence, AI, generative AI. So all of these AI companies are listed over here. And uh, if you look at you know, a sample page from YC, uh, the name is provided, the description over here, the founder details. So I've captured all these along with all the tags that they have and cleaned the data, captured it, in this Airtable sheet. Okay, so I have company name, description, category. These are 417 companies that I collected. While looking at a subset of these companies, I have found many exceptional use cases. And in fact, uh, part of the data collection process has been uh, done with the help of a company called Gumloop, which is backed by YC, which was previously called Agentive. Okay, and I find myself using Gumloop uh, more than I had imagined. Now, coming to the analysis. I've tried to capture my entire analysis in this newsletter article of mine. Uh, it's called High Signal AI. Uh, the link will be provided in the description below. The first part of the analysis was to look at the hottest industries and sectors that have adopted AI quickly, where people have found really good use cases. And looking at this plot, you'll see that healthcare and biotech is the leader here with 45 companies solving problems in this industry, which accounts for 10.8% of my data of all the companies that I have collected, followed by fintech, 
with 38 companies. 37 companies are building some sort of developer tools. 34 companies are trying to automate some sort of sales or marketing workflow, and then 18 companies in education. So if you look at these sample companies, I have this study, which is trying to innovate in this education industry and AI math tutor for every student. So you have these examples in each and every industry and healthcare and biotech is the leader so far. Now, next you would want to understand, should you build in B2B or B2C? The numbers here are going to amaze you. You have 338 companies out of 417 building in the B2B sector. 81.1% of the companies are solving B2B problems. Only 18.9% companies are operating in this B2C sector. And you can find a few examples like Giga ML, which is helping enterprises build and deploy large language models. And then B2C, you have Rex, PocketPod, Shortbread. These are the kind of companies and kind of problems that people are solving in the B2C sector. So these numbers showcase, you know, strong confidence in B2B sector uh, from investors. Uh, and uh, B2C has a lot of untapped potential. Uh, as you can see that only 20% of the companies are operating in this particular sector. Infrastructure versus application. So this is obvious. Uh, as we've seen in traditional software engineering, majority of the people are going to build in the application layer. That means they are going to build some sort of application using the you know, underlying architecture, underlying infrastructure. And for obvious reasons, infrastructure layer is hard to build. The skill set required is also uh, rare and uh, investment requirements are also high. So this data as well coming from YC may not be representative of the number of companies operating in the infrastructure layer, uh, which obviously is going to be you know low uh, in number. So 14.9% companies in infrastructure layer and 355 companies uh, operating in the application layer. Uh, so 85.1% and 14.9% over here. Automation has been the biggest use case of uh, AI across all industries. And there are two types of automations. One is completely AI driven and another one is uh, co-pilots or assistants. So AI assisted human work. That means you are trying to help humans deliver faster. You are automating some part of the workflow. Now here 69.1% of the companies are trying to build some sort of assistance to help uh, humans deliver faster. And 31% of the companies are building entire AI driven automations. There are companies like Offon that are trying to automate order taking at fast food drive throughs And there are companies like Constructible that are building co-pilots for construction teams, helping streamline projects, ideation, reduce losses during, you know, due to bad data. We've seen which industries have adopted AI quickly, but what about the industries that are still lagging, which need more and more innovation, which need more people to incorporate AI to solve their problems. And these are manufacturing, agriculture, energy, retail. 16 companies only combined together in these industries. So you need more and more people and these industries present opportunities for first movers in AI adoption. Now let's talk about the technologies, specifically AI technologies that these startups are leveraging. Now, when I talk about AI technologies, I talk about machine learning, generative AI, natural language processing, computer vision, uh, media generation, video processing, so on and so forth. And take these numbers with a pinch of salt because a lot of these technologies are overlapping. So there may be companies that are using multiple AI technologies to solve their problems. And at the top, for obvious reasons, we have generative AI because LLMs are advancing pretty quickly. 78 companies using or building something using Gen AI. Then we have machine learning, 56 companies, NLP 47 and computer vision 18. As I said, there will be many companies which are using both NLP or generative AI, using both machine learning, computer vision, so on and so forth. Moving on to open source versus proprietary. Uh, now this data may not be correct because YC obviously would not want to you know, fund uh, a lot of open source companies. So 95.7%. 399 companies are proprietary and 4.3% of the companies are building in uh, open source. Uh, please note that there are a lot of companies out there which are coming out of open source projects. 
if we talk about other technologies and other different types of uh, technical trends that we see in these ai startups edge ai so models running on your phone uh, apple is doing uh, a lot of work uh, in this particular category but uh, when we look at yc data only two companies 0.5% of the companies uh, mentioned that they are solving something in edge ai only five companies mentioned that they're working or trying to solve something with model efficiency uh, that is reducing the computational resources that it needs to train one large language model so 1.2% of the companies focusing on ai model uh, efficiency 46 companies are building something with real time ai uh, that is voice agents uh, primarily multimodal so approximately 22 companies 5.3% uh, appear to be working on multimodal AI solutions. Now, as AI is evolving, there are a lot of regulations, there are a lot of concerns around data privacy, AI safety, explainability, so on and so forth. So there are layers of critical issues that are required to be solved. Now, there are startups that are addressing data privacy and security concerns. 18 companies, 4.3% explicitly mentioned that they're solving something in uh, data privacy and security sector. So cybersecurity and data privacy, one such company is Corgia. There are startups, only five uh, so far, which are working on ethical AI or AI safety. Uh, so there's a lot of potential over there. Startups making AI accessible for non-technical users. So there are companies like Creo, which is trying to build internal tools with AI without coding, so no code tools. There are three companies uh, that are working on explainable AI, adding more transparency. Then we have uh, 11 companies solving challenges in climate tech. Uh, three companies uh, trying to address issues with bias and fairness uh, using AI. We have uh, AI for small businesses versus enterprise solutions. So if you look at this, 70.7% of the companies are enterprise solution. Only 8.9% are built for small businesses. Looking at these numbers, we definitely need more and more people to work on these critical issues around safety, regulation, data privacy, uh, security. And uh, there is... A lot of potential to grow uh, within these uh, sectors. Coming to some hard uh, emerging technologies which is blockchain and quantum computing. Now obviously these technologies and uh, the fields are so complex that you would not have uh, a lot of companies solving these problems but we have a bunch of them. Quantum computing, there are two companies uh, which are trying to incorporate AI with quantum computing, solve something over there. Then we have three companies working on blockchain. So Conductor Quantum, harnessing quantum computing to potentially solve complex problems beyond the reach of classical AI. And then we have companies like Cedalio or Kedalio, uh, merging blockchain with AI for enhanced data integrity and decentralized intelligence. So there is still a lot of potential uh, within these two sectors. Specifically, I'm, I'm more interested in blockchain, how you integrate blockchain with AI to build something uh, amazing. Now let's come to the background of the people who are willing to work on these problems, work on these startups. So typical background of a YC backed founder. Here you can see most, more than 75% of the founders have strong technical expertise in computer science or software engineering, machine learning or data science. Especially if you are an AI founder, you have to be very strong in programming. So educational background, most around 20% of the founders are coming from prestigious institutes like Howard, MIT, Stanford, Berkeley. 25% of them have previously worked at strong leading tech companies like Google, Facebook, Meta. Okay, 15% of the founders have prior startup experience or so they have worked on you know, some of their own startups before. And 8% uh, of the founders come from academic research backgrounds, PhDs, postdoc, university professors. And 45% uh, have co-founding teams. So that means a technical founder plus a business or operations founder. So they together make a, a good team. 24% have backgrounds that position them to disrupt traditional industries. So they have already uh, done deep work 
within those industries and they would bring in perspective that will help the technical founder or the business founder to take it further within that particular industry. Now, not to mention that if you have done exceptional work in the past, uh, without having these titles uh, or uh, prestigious institutes in your background, you can still make a mark. Uh, all you need is, uh, you know, drive and uh, showcase some evidence that you can actually, you know, uh, overcome those challenges that are going to come when you will work on something hard, something that uh, YC would love to, uh, you know, invest in. Now, putting this entire analysis together has what I would recommend to anyone but obviously you know feel free to go through the entire analysis and build the answer for yourself i would suggest that you focus on the b2b sector at this point okay uh, look at underserved uh, industries manufacturing retail if you know somebody that's good uh, prioritize technical expertise because you would need uh, technical expertise to thrive in this business if you do not have that expertise partner up with somebody who does then uh, Leverage generative AI in an innovative manner to stand out because there are many companies which are just rappers and they'll soon be, uh, you know, out of business because as soon as OpenAI releases their next model, a lot of businesses are going to shut uh, because of that. Then address ethical concerns. This is a category which is hard to solve, but uh, will have a lot of potential because there are going to be many regulations coming in, new bills are going to pass and uh, privacy, cybersec, these are uh, issues that a lot of companies are going to have to deal with. So if you can build a solution around it, yeah, you are going to stand out in that particular category then. So, yep, that's been it. And I hope that you found this video useful, insightful. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. That's the best way you can uh, help me subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Until then, keep learning and keep building with AI.